How you guys doing? Chris Ignato here, and you are watching Nature Now. So, I know it's the winter months, but I still have some warmer weather topics to share with you guys. So, without further ado, here's a cool little creature I'm sure will impress you. Let's get started. Picture this. You're taking a slow and quiet stroll through your local park. It's a warm September afternoon, accompanied by a soft breeze, carrying with it the songs of some bird whose name you do not know, but its song is lovely. You happen upon a nice goldenrod meadow. This meadow is filled with all sorts of vibrant colors, the greens of summer grasses, the fuchsia of knapweed, and numerous arcing stems filled with pink and magenta from various flowers ready to make their seeds. The meadow is dominated by the warm, rich yellow of the goldenrods. You see a honeybee going about its duties and you peek a little closer to appreciate all her hard work. Just as you're ready to snap a photo with your phone, poof, something has happened. The bee is now on its side and moving rather unbee-like. The flower has grabbed onto it. <laughs> no, this is no flower. It is some strange alien composed of greens and yellows and maybe even a little pink. You are witnessing none other than the stealthy and formidable ambush bug, the silent assassin of the summer meadow. These insects are a member of a group of insects known as assassin bugs, and they're among the few insects that can officially claim the name bug. Such a lovely fright these creatures are. Not very large, having short, stout bodies which makes them unique among the assassin bug group. To humans, they can often be a beneficial insect at times, but a nuisance at other times. Well, they feed on insects such as hoppers, thrips, and other insects that can harm garden plants and vegetables. They sometimes feed on beneficial insects such as bees and even other assassin bugs. Although, to humans, ambush bugs are not much of a threat, are in fact a welcome visitor to our gardens. Both the juveniles sporting their little wing buds and the adults are insect predators. I've never been bitten or pinched by one and I don't fear I ever will be. And they're not actually that big, reaching about half an inch at most. Let's talk about their tools of the trade. Obviously, you may gather that their adornment is their first weapon, and rightly so. They wear such impressive camouflage that I have had trouble getting other people to see them while pointing directly at them. Like many assassin bugs, they blend in so well with the environment they inhabit that there is no need to improve on this design. Along with their color, they have little projections on their body, perhaps resembling the ends of maybe flower petals or leaf buds. There is even a species in the family that wears the carcasses of its defeated prey on its back like some shroud or trophy of the macabre. Someday, I hope to have footage of that species. Once in a while, a little head bobbing might catch your eye, but that's it. They will sit so still that a prey item might even walk on its face or back, and even then, the ambush bug will sit patiently still. Not until something tasty comes along and entices it, and everything lines up just right, do you see movement? This can occur in two ways. It might slowly approach its victim to within striking distance, or more often than not, it might actually wait until its food source is directly in front of its face, and then, with a flash, it snatches it up. With the speed of a kung fu guru, it lunges out with its modified front legs and grasps its prey. The insect never saw it coming. Those forelegs are wonderful hunting tools. The four tibia, the front half of the legs, are thin, curved hooks, complete with tiny teeth or spines for gripping. The four femora, the half of the leg closer to the insect's body, is swollen with muscles used to snatch and restrain their prey mercilessly. These legs resemble the forelegs of a more popular insect known as the praying mantis, or even the mantid fly, and that clearly shows that through necessity, evolution can often take on similar solutions to best suit the situation. That's not all though. Now comes the true assassin's weapon, the deadly elixir. Ambush bugs, and most assassin bugs, harbor a powerful venom for subduing their prey. 
After it has caught its food, it will extend its pointy beak, which when at rest will be tucked into a groove under its face in between the forelegs. It will pierce its victim with its beak and inject a paralyzing concoction that often begins the digestive process before the bug even starts to feed. The beak is, in essence, a straw. This straw will be used to suck the insides out of the insect that is just hunted. When all is done, it just discards the hollow insect husk. <laughs> a lot like a kid might do with an empty sandwich wrapper after lunch. The ambush bug, together with its combination of stealth and cunning, powerfully adapted hooked front legs and its immobilizing saliva is an amazing addition to the hunters out there in the invertebrate world. I am so glad that ambush bugs are not something us humans will ever have to look over our shoulders for. So I really hope you guys like this video. In the future, like most of my videos, I'll probably have a more in-depth video with more detail and stuff, but we'll have to wait for that one. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video, and uh, next time you're in a meadow, keep your eyes open. Maybe you'll see an ambush bug for yourselves. Thanks a lot for watching. Once again, I am Chris Ignato, signing out. Thanks a lot for watching, and remember, if you like this video, be sure to check out this video over here that YouTube has selected specifically for you based on your watch time. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, but you gotta click the bell icon, because if you don't, YouTube will never let you know when a new video of mine comes out. And remember, 